Twitch and YouTube. This is A Night of Misfortune bringing you the semifinal number two of the season final of the SCS 2021 for the fall. And we are back on Powderhorn Mesa for game one. I am now joined by Spiff. Say hello, Spiff, and introduce our first player, please. Uh, hello, Spiff, and introduce our first player, please. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Thank you, Knight. <laughs> Always fun to be here with you. And uh, today we have a Cyber and Mirror match. We're going to get started over here on the left-hand side of Powderhorn Mesa, introducing the one, the only, the Red Cyber and ACU. It is Iron Commander. And he started off with a quick air factory uh, and is following that up with a land factory. Uh, and as his scout gets over onto the other side of the map, what is it going to see, Knight? Another side of the map, he's going to see our yellow Cyber Commander from Germany. He is Soul Ripper 77, opening up with the same build. I think I'm going to ban Spiff for, uh, for that intro there. Well, that's it. I'm banned. <laughs> see you guys later. Bye. <laughs> My internet will be cutting out any second now. You know, I think that Soul Ripper and Iron, I don't, I, I mean, you're not going to find a better partner to practice than against Iron, but when you're playing that person in the, in the next match, I don't think it's the best uh, person to practice against. Well, what do you think about that, Spiff? <laughs> um, well, I mean, you always have to be concerned that, uh, you know, when you're practicing against someone and, and then, uh, you you come up against them in the bracket that maybe they were holding back during practice. Right. And, uh, when I, if I were playing iron and doing pretty well, I would definitely be thinking, Hmm, maybe he's holding back. Right. But it, it's also good to, I don't know. I feel like when you're, when you're the, I guess the underdog, it's better not to play against that person. Um, and Soul Ripper was kind of seeking out to play with, with iron so i don't know we'll see it's definitely going to be a hard fight for soul ripper but i am definitely cheering for him because like i mentioned in the last best out of five it's basically down to hope and soul ripper to see who goes on to the invitational and i would just really love to see a, a showdown in that final to basically see who goes <laughs> so that would be very very interesting and uh, we already have iron commander in this game pushing out aggressively and expanding just like he does normally so this will be a, a very hard, hard fight for Soul Ripper here. I, I don't remember the last time I saw Iron get quite so up in the face of his opponent, though, this early in the game. I think he realizes that this is uh, Soul Ripper is doing the same build as him, and he is up on air and about to really get a really good engagement. I think. Nope. Soul Ripper does a nice job microing there. And I think, yeah, he can just take the the forward position here, be very, very aggressive because that air for Soul Ripper is effectively um, nullified here because of that advantage for Iron. And he has more than enough Loyalists at this point. Somehow he's managed to spam out twice the number, almost that uh, of his opponent. Yeah. Um, and that's without an engineer assisting too. Right. And uh, while expanding over there to the top, I guess Soul Ripper is just a little better on the expansion at this point, but he's in trouble here in the front. And that's what Iron does is he just takes the forward position and uh, really locks down the map. And it's really, really hard to deal with. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm just wondering when are we going to see him throw down a forward factory here or a point defense. Well, there is a second land factory for Soul Ripper, and uh, you know, defensive advantage is definitely a thing. Uh, but Iron is just—he's—he's he's so good at uh, locking down, like you just said, locking down the forward place uh, with a with a land factory, and then somehow he doesn't even need Cobras. He just—he manages to hold it ex with exactly the amount of units that he needs to. It's really quite impressive and really quite frustrating when you do end up playing against him. He's almost like playing an Aeon type game as a Cybern, which I guess isn't that hard to do when you're PD pushing, but at the same time, it's so, so frustrating. Yeah, definitely. 
and I, I, I just, yeah, I, I'm surprised that we haven't seen any buildings in the center here yet. Yeah. It's a little unusual from Iron. I feel like Iron is being nice. There's an anti-air tower <laughs> going down for both players. There we go. Something not built on the front. Yeah, so now I think it's just important for Soul Ripper to recognize maybe maybe we don't even need air anymore. Maybe we just transition hard into land. And I think that's what we saw Mogenrod doing against Iron, and he kind of succeeded. I'm surprised that, again, um, Soul Ripper is not really playing against an opponent build, but we see them playing, you know, their standard kind of build and whatever is safest. Which I don't think you, you can play against, especially when you're the underdog. And I'm, I'm going to come back to this again because I really like that map and maybe I'm bi biased. But I don't think that Soul Ripper should have banned Emerald Crater. Like no matter if you practice on it or not, you just if you're the underdog, you don't ban an air map. I, I just That's my opinion. Spiff, maybe you disagree with me. But uh, that's what I think. He banned, what did he ban? He banned... Uh, uh, yeah, he banned Emerald Crater, so I was really surprised. Well, you know, to be honest, I'm just not sure that it matters all that much, seeing as it is a mirror matchup. Um, you know, neither side has a, a distinct advantage in terms of available tech. So I, I, I think the map selection matters a little bit less in this scenario. Well, I think that Iron, if, if Soul Ripper watched the semi-final or quarter-final, anyway, the match against Mogan Ra, I think Iron showed that he struggled against what Mogan did. And I feel like Soul Ripper could have used that to his advantage. Oh, nice structured Edo. Yeah, that took out a lot of loyalists there. Yeah, and... Both the airs went down, although Soul Ripper still has a couple of planes in the back, but they're not going to do a whole lot. And yeah, this is basically the nuclear build minus the adapters here. With the point defense push here. Those loyalists really should be under the shield. There we go. That point defense didn't last long, though. Nope. And uh, it's still getting fired upon by that factory, so it's going to go down here pretty quickly again. Or it and, should. Uh, and you had just earlier said, oh, those planes won't get much done. Well, that was a really nice bombing run. It looks like they got six, seven. Yeah, I really don't. I think Soul Ripper got a really good engagement about a minute ago on uh, the uh, uh, on the planes. While Iron was bombing uh, the Loyalists, and he only got two Loyalists, but... I, uh, Soul Ripper was able to get position his planes right behind, and no amount of air anti-air is gonna help with a poor engagement. So that's how he's now able to have an air lead. And Iron, I think, just resumed his air production. So I think actually Soul Ripper held this very well. Yeah, um, he's managed to push back Iron's uh, forward buildings here. Um, they're all gone now and with cobras rolling out there's no real way that iron's going to be building in this same spot again he needs to pull back if he wants to establish another forward base yeah the issue here now is that iron was able to expand behind <laughs> this as uh, as he normally does and uh now i a soul ripper is down on not only mass expansion but also land production which he's Quickly catching up on the land production front, but still the expansions is going to be very hard to deal with, especially with all these run buys of the loyalists. Which probably shouldn't happen when you have air. Well, it's not a lot of air, though. It's not a whole lot, but it's definitely enough to be if bombing the, the, the harass. Yeah, I don't know. I think, uh, I mean, <clears throat> air will clean up a harass in a pinch, but I don't think it's the most efficient way to clean up harass most of the time. Um, yeah, I mean, in especially this case, if it is split. In this case, it is a pinch because Soul Ripper doesn't really have much on the ground to defend this harass, but. Uh, ooh, nice Dedo there takes care of it. Yeah, at this point, though, if I was Soul Ripper, you know, you're playing defensively, you're kind of in one spot. I, I would go Megalith. I don't, I don't know if he had enough research for it, but I feel like Megalith would have been a much nicer thing here. 
There's a lot of research stations going down for iron, so maybe he's going to end up going mega. <laughs> Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like, uh, I mean, with with Iron pulling his commander back, I think it's likely that he's teching in that direction. You never know, though. I think he's going to wait to see what Soul Ripper does, although he probably already saw that there's a land spam coming. So I think maybe a nanogun transition would be nice, or just the good old Cyber and Dev Ball would be pretty good here. Well, with four research stations total, Iron is going to be running away with the tech game, that's for sure. Yeah, absolutely. There is a research station for Soul Ripper now, so that's pretty yeah, just, nice. Just the amount of energy that's going down for Iron, I would say most likely thing is Megalith here. Yeah. But you never know, it could be Jump Jets. I, I don't see that being likely just because Iron doesn't have a whole lot of ground army right now. Yeah, and I think Soul Ripper is playing way too passively. That's I played a few games uh, against him this week, and I've been noticing this, this a lot. He just sits back and, and waits for... I honestly don't even know what uh, half the time. And I feel like he could be um, putting pressure on the base at the top, seeing that there isn't that many units out on the field, especially seeing no adapters on the field. I think he definitely could have started harassing that expansion. There's double land gantry being placed by Iron mean meanwhile. I'm not sure if that one in the north is going to get up before this uh, no. attack comes in, though. And I think this is going to be a nice pickoff by Soul Ripper if he plays this right, assuming he doesn't walk into Structure Deto. No, don't pull Any back, Soul Ripper. Ugh. Yeah, it's a little too cautious. I mean, you don't want to overextend because then... Your entire southern flank is open for Iron's army to run in. But at the same time, you got to get some damage done. You have the unit advantage. There's no adapters. If, if Iron decides to counterpunch, you can deal with it relatively well with your land. Or sorry, your air. I just I don't understand why we're playing so passively here for Soul Ripper. He's technically ahead as of this point until that Mega comes out. Oh man, an engineer got captured on the bottom. That's unfortunate. Yeah, it looks like there's a some sort of wreck down there too. Uh he he built uh Soul Ripper built a land factory. Uh -huh. And he control cated once or sorry, structure dead owed it. Um after his engineer got captured. Well, hopefully you got that on stream. I completely missed it on my screen. Why? Soul Ripper, you can win this game. Why are we so passive? I like the adapter switch, especially with megaliths and the resumption of air production. I really like that. But All it right. is going to take a minute for yeah. uh, Soul to get enough adapters to really make a difference in the fight against this mega. Yeah. Adapters do really well against Megas. You just need like a, a certain critical mass. Yeah. And uh, Iron's just going to do Iron things. He's going to harass with just a third and a quarter of Harvogs. Or sorry, <laughs> Loyalists. My bad. And uh, yeah, just put uh, Soul Ripper in as much of an uncomfortable situation as he possibly can. This bombing run is going to do nothing. Although that's a matter of perspective because it's going to do a lot for Soul Ripper. <laughs> and we also have adapters for Iron Commander as well. I would love to see Soul Ripper put his uh, MMLs on a separate hotkey and uh, really deliberately target fire some of those buildings down. Yeah. Well, yeah. again, though, he kind of missed his window because Iron's adapters are now hitting the field here. Yeah, he's going to take the air fight here. Um, doesn't manage to really engage in a too of an efficient manner. Something got upgraded on the land forces for Soul Ripper. It's probably jump jets, as I say. There is the jump jet. <laughs> and uh, maybe unit Deto? I don't know about that, yes. though. Yeah, that's not a great Deto. What the heck? 
Yeah, I think um, Soul Ripper definitely could have done better. I think that base on the top could have definitely gone down before that Soul Ripper, or sorry, uh, Megalith made uh, its way forward. But overall, well played by both players. Nice hold by Soul Ripper there. And uh, Iron Commander does manage to get the 1-0 lead as we go on to game two in this best out of five to see who our best Cybern player is of the season to go and face the Aeon Scum in the final. We'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back, everybody, to the fall season finals. We are bringing you this semifinal match on QAI Labs. This is game two. I am Spiff, joining Knight of Misfortune, and Knight, why don't you go ahead and reintroduce our first player. All right, Where, well, start, bleh, starting on the left-hand side of Kai Labs, we have our red Cybern Commander from Denmark. He is none other than Iron Commander, opening up with an Air Factory. It looks like just going to wait and see for the scout. What is his opponent doing, Spiff? On the other side of the map, spawning in as the yellow Cybern Commander, it is Soul Ripper 77. And he has started off with an eco focus on his build, and he has opened with a land factory instead of air. Um, so I had said before we started that I, I was kind of hoping to just see Mega versus Mega butting heads in the middle at exactly the same time. And based on the opening builds, I don't think that's what's going to happen. Yeah, I don't either. This is kind of weird from Soul Ripper. Uh, he is not opening up with a research station, so it's not the Amayoba build. Oh, there's the research station. This is weird. I am Did now thoroughly confused. I, that's what I was going to say, but I don't know. Soul Ripper, I feel like it's better than that, but maybe the nerves are getting to him. Air production is not paused from Iron. So he feels confident enough to maybe get up to five, but no, there's going to be adapters. So after this, I really think he's going to pause. Yep. I don't know if he quite saw that adapter popping out though. Maybe he did. Hmm. So I wonder if what's, I, want, I wonder if Soul Ripper's thinking here was, oh, I've saved my research points. Iron opened air, so I need adapters. And since I have to spend my first research points, I'd better get a research station. Maybe that's what was going through his head. Maybe. And I wonder if he was trying to hide his research station in the middle. That might have also been a thing. But, I mean, it's just so easy to scout on this map. It's not, it's not hard. And I feel like you're taking a risk for essentially delayed research points when you're build probably revolves around getting to Mega at this point. I think Iron is actually make a, making a mistake here, placing down two additional land factories. Wait, you think he should focus more on air? I think he or should throw down his a own research, research station. Yeah, I think he should have thrown down a research station before two land, and then maybe he could go two land. But right now, I think it's just completely unnecessary unless he wants to just aggressive push this out, which could be an option here too. But I just I like the research station much better, seeing that your opponent opened up two re, uh, two land that are far in the back and also a research station and and adapters. So there's no there's not going to be any aggression from Soul Ripper. Although I guess we have the possibility of the nuclear build. I don't know if you. Well, yeah, you casted those games with me. You know, the nuclear build with the PD push. Right. But I still think there was room to get a research station out before the land. And it looks like he is going to be aggressive, but this isn't aggression with the ACU. And on this map, it's kind of easy to deal with with your commander and just a handful of loyalists. So I don't see this being a problem for Soul Ripper unless he really messes up his micro here. Yeah. Then Iron is not even going to bother. He's just going to send it back. Yeah, I mean, the problem with going adapters here is that it does slow down your tech a lot. So I, I'd be, I'll be interested to see where Soul Ripper goes from here. He's building more land factories, so or at least one more. 
Um, so um, maybe jump jets. It's probably what I would go for. Well, I think here you just save your research because if you go mega, it's really dangerous against what iron can do and I think is going to do here, which is probably just going to be the same thing he did last game and just push with point defense. Um, I think you got to go nano here. I think that jump jet jump jet unidetto is very hard to pull off when you're the when you're the underdog. It's so hard to do. Um even for a good player, like effectively, especially in a cyber and mirror where you're at a disadvantage for using your structure dedo offensively. So, I I don't like I don't like uh unidetto here. But I also don't like this point defense. <laughs> I think that point Ripper defense does manage to save it, though. Yeah, he does. Very nicely done. Well, for a moment. But what are you going to do against those Cobras now? I think you just got to engage. When you have adapters, I think you just got to engage with your ACU and Loyalist and see if you can just do some damage. And this is exactly what I said. Is uh, Iron, if, he, if he's not going to go research... He's most definitely going to try and push, and that's exactly what's going to happen here. Hmm, that PD is kind of far forward, though. Yeah, he'll get it up. Yeah, he'll get Soul it up. Soul Ripper... I, I feel like Soul Ripper had an opportunity to take that PD down before it, uh, before it built. Uh, it's dangerous, because if it does get built... And Iron probably has Structured Edo. Um, or the option to do it. That's just game over. It's too big of a risk. And you're focusing down a structure when you don't have enough units to, you know, when your opponent has more Loyalists than you. That was a nice move right there. He utilized uh, Iron being a little bit out of position with his, with his blob there. Yeah, I just I, I feel like there was a moment a little earlier when he could have done that for the first PD, and that really would have helped delay this push. He's also not really engaging at the optimal point when his adapters are up. His land factory now has gone down. Iron's just microing very well here with his loyalists against the Brackman fire. Yeah, Mr. Soul Ripper, I'm sorry, but I'm going to criticize you a little bit. But when you're playing a player like Iron Commander, you can't uh, you can't play League of Legends 75% of the <laughs> week in preparation and uh, expect to, to do well. <laughs> and only practice with Iron Commander the rest of the 25% of the time that you do have. A little critical, I know, I'm sorry, but... Uh, I told you. I offered to practice, and he said I, I'm not good enough for him. I'm not good enough for him to practice, which is true. I'm not Ooh. Iron Commander, nowhere near, but. That's harsh, though. I know. I, I felt sad. So it, you're being rough on him as a commentator because it's a personal vendetta. I oh, see. yeah, absolutely. Nah, yeah. there's no there's no hard feelings. I've been I've been very terrible recently. <laughs> and how's your gameplay been? <laughs> wow. <But I'm> <laughs> wow. What well, you're being a... so hard on Soul Rippers. Someone's <laughs> got to be hard on you. I'm already hard on myself to the point of being uh, self deprecating. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's gotten to the point where my macro has been so bad I can't, like, use my hotkeys. I've actually exchanged the B key on my keyboard for a special key that stands out so I can press it more efficiently. Because I keep pressing V and I literally press everything but B. <laughs> and then it's it's so bad because I also press L instead of um, you know other buttons. So I end up pausing everything when it should be like building stuff. Yeah, it's rough. Oh. 
Well, just don't control K all of your stuff by accident. Oh, I did that once in a match. I, was, I pulled a vanity. <laughs> That's officially a vanity. Oh, is it? <laughs> yes. <laughs> officially. Um, I do see some glowy on Soul Ripper, there and yep, it is. there's the nano gun. Yeah, I think that's the correct choice, but at this point, I think we've lost too much. Yeah, we've lost too much. We, that is gonna do. That's gonna push uh, Iron back, though. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I mean, Iron doesn't really have a whole lot to deal with that, and yeah, he's lost most of his army. Yeah, there's no. I adapters. think if so, I think. I think if Soul jumps on it right now and pushes hard with a PD or two, I think he can take back control of this game. The problem is, is that he, needs he to still move now. doesn't have Cobras. And there's just a little too much firepower, I think, from from Iron. And his AC well, is half health. The Cobras are coming now. Looks like this engineer, I think, was brought forward to heal the ACU and then forgotten about. Oh, no, it's on attack move. Never mind. Yeah, and I mean, this is absolutely the correct response from Iron. Just get as many PDs as you can and break through the shield and engage with everything. He's already pre-splitting his army, which is absolutely the right thing to do here against the nano uh, splash. So, yeah, I mean, Iron just... Iron's too good, guys. Iron's too good. And maybe it's uh, it's too much to expect yourself to win against him, no matter what you do. <laughs> well, I mean, it's it's got to be tough uh, to be Soul Ripper right now because, like, it just seems like Iron has got your number, and everything that you do, it seems like he knows exactly what to do to respond to it, and. You know, really, it just co comes down to little tiny mistakes, little tiny advantages that can be found here and there. And Soul Ripper is, like, so close to having it exactly right, but not quite there. Yeah. At the end of the day, though, I'll say this again. I, I don't think this is a build to play against uh, Iron. Um, even though he does like spam, I don't think Nano is great at the end of the day. Because it, it essentially relies on you being able to hold your defensive position before you get the nano, which is kind of a hard ask when your opponent is going to go most likely, you know, either mega or, or mobile missile launchers before you get to nano. And I think what Magenra did was honestly a very nice counter. And Iron has been using the same exact opening in most of his matches. He starts with one air one land and then he just sees what he needs to do which is brilliant it's kind of it's, it's amazing i've kind of experimented with that myself um and i think it's definitely the way to go but it's predictable you know and it's counterable as Magenra has shown and that's why i think you just you gotta not practice the standard game when you're at this point and practice counters so many adapters Goodness gracious. Uh, I mean, that's the counter to Nano, pretty much. So, yeah. there you go. It is quite pretty watching the particle effects on the Nano gun go through all the shields. Yeah. And there's the Mega. Counter after counter. Maybe a little hope. Maybe a little butthurt. But it's understandable. Hi, nuclear. Hello. A lot of research stations going down for, sh for, uh, for Soul Ripper. Maybe overcharge, but there's just there's so many shields. Just forget about it. Especially when we're walking into point defenses and mobile missile launcher fire with our ACU. Like, what can we really expect? 
And I'm kind of surprised at the number of adapters that Iron has managed to pump out. Because, like, I feel like he didn't have that many factories. He's been, he's been building nothing but adapters. Because <laughs> he's going into Mega. Like, there's no way that um, Soul Ripper can push this position out. So, yeah, at this point, he just needs to outrange the Nano and then win. Yeah, I mean, again, I feel like I feel like Soul Ripper really needs to be target firing his MMLs. Cuz uh, he's not target firing at all and if any of them do get through, you want them all to hit the same thing. It's a little late to be getting them through now, but yeah. I was going to say there's no way he's getting through now even. I, I was going to say that if there is something that Soul Ripper can do, it's going to be recycler. But then uh, Iron can just switch his production into MMLs. <laughs> well, there, there are two recyclers coming down right now, so there you go. And you really would have needed to build it in range of that land factory. I think it. I think it might be in range of the land factories. Just barely. No, the line gantry, sorry. Maybe I oh. misspoke. Man, I just sound like a fanboy, but which I am. But Iron is just I just I don't see Iron getting beat by anyone. And I know as a caster, I'm supposed to stay hopeful for all players. <laughs> but it's just... Oh my goodness. Iron's too good. I don't know how anybody is allowed to be this good. Alright, Recycler is going to come down on the Megalith. Uh, that Nano really needed is, is really needed here. Recyclers take forever to take down a Mega, though. Yeah. You need, like, eight of them to do real consistent damage. And with that land factory gone, now the Mega's going to be firing on the Recyclers. Yeah. Actually, no, it's still firing on the... Structure Deto? On the Blob. A little bit of Miss Micro by... So or Iron? No, he wanted to do Structure Deto. And yeah, now I think it's a good game. Yep, F in chat for Soul Ripper's army. Yeah. But hey, we got recyclers in a, a pro match. I love it. Yeah, I feel like both Iron and, and Soul... Well, Soul just kind of takes a lot of pointers from Iron, obviously. As a Cyber player, you kind of have to. But yeah, I mean, it wasn't it wasn't a bad... Like, I think he did everything correctly, given the situation. But it's just... Iron is just going to be ahead because of his position and... Just the overwhelming amount of uh, units that he managed to build up, so there isn't really a whole lot you can do unless your opponent messes up royally. So, kind of unfortunate here for Soul Ripper, but you can't play Iron's game to beat Iron, because Iron will win that 99 out of 100 times, I think. And uh, Soul Ripper does call GG. It's not over yet for Soul Ripper. He can definitely still pull back, which maybe at this point he will start mixing a little bit of a crazier build. Uh, the next map, I think, is Desolation, if I remember correctly. So that can honestly be Soul Ripper's map. So we'll see how that goes. We'll be right back with Game 3 in just a moment. Welcome back, everybody, to Game 3 in this Cybern Mirror semi-final match on Desolatia. I'm going to pass it on to Spiff for the player introductions. All right, starting on the north side of the map, spawning in once again as the yellow Cybern commander. It is Soul Ripper 77, and he has decided to open air, which is no big surprise on this map. Uh, and Knight, what's going on on the other side of the map? 
Another side of the map, as predicted by you and I before the match started. It is Iron Commander opening up with an air factory and going into a land factory. Same exact build, guys. He, I don't think I remember him opening up anything different <laughs> in any of his matches that I've cast in the season final. Yep. Um, it's been the same build over and over, but it's been working out real well for him. Yeah. Um, well, I should say not the same build, the same opener. Because it's it's a very flexible build. It's a scout build, see what's going on, and then go from there. And choose your counters carefully. It's a really good build. Um, about a year and a half ago, um, I was experimenting with it a lot. Um, the issue with it is that if, if your opponent... Because he's essentially placing down a land factory and an air factory before the scout. If your opponent open a, opens up double air or triple land, it is kind of hard to deal with as a Cybern in the early game. Um, but Cybern Mirror is kind of easier, obviously, especially if your opponent is opening up the same thing. Which is another reason why I keep saying this. You just you can't play Iron's game to beat Iron. He's just he's gonna be ahead of you no matter what. And you have to throw a wrench into it somehow. Um, and Soul Ripper has been just doing the exact same thing as well. So that that adds a layer of predictability, and uh, you know, an added an added uh, difficulty for him to, or an added barrier for him to win this match. Same exact build, by the way, Spiff. Look at that. <laughs> yeah. Maybe this time we'll see Megas butting heads in the center, but probably not. Probably not. No, I'm, I'm calling that Iron. Soul Ripper is going to drop a land factory where he is. Iron is going to move forward and build a land factory on the top left. That's that's my that's my call here. Well, with those loyalists moving ahead, it certainly does look like uh, Iron has designs on that left-hand side of the map. Mm -hmm. Air is going to go to Iron here. Now, I missed it before. I don't know if maybe that you're focusing on it on stream, um, but uh, Soul Ripper did lose his scout. But I thought it might have been a Control K on his scout. Did Did you happen to notice? No, I didn't catch it. Oh, okay, it's possible. Yeah. Well, the the reason I thought that was because the score at that moment was still still had Soul Ripper on top, and if Iron had gotten a kill, then I would assume Probably that he a would be on top. K then, yeah. Well, well Iron has managed to uh, throw a wrench into Soul's expansion here. Yeah, this is already rough for Soul Ripper. Like, extremely rough. That land factory was also super delayed. I don't think we should have moved back to build it, even though, you know, this is kind of bad. But, yeah, this is just... If Iron makes any kind of move forward, it's... It's uh nail in the coffin, essentially. Well, Souls are getting getting a little bit of his own back with a loyalist. Ooh, structure Deto there nearly kills it though. Oh, cheeky reclaim. Where? Uh, so oh, Souls the... loyalist. Yeah. yeah, Souls loyalist was on its last legs. Oh, I wish I caught that. Look at that and engineer. That engine... It's like at two hundred health. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah, Structure Dead almost killed it, and then the last little bit was done by the Engineer with the Reclaim. And that Air Tower... Ugh, it, it, in overtime. Sucks to, it sucks to have to put it back there, though. Yeah. Like, it's a big resource sink, and now it's all the way in the back where it's only going to defend uh, if Iron pushes ahead. He does save that engineer though. And yeah, this is the issue with putting your factory back there. Is now your forward two mass extractors and the radar are just going to get wrecked. And iron setting up in the center. Man, there's just enough everywhere to be a nuisance just enough like that air 
is being countered by that anti-air tower, but there's three loyalists, which effectively make it useless. There's point defense going to come down. Let's see if he has structured Edo. Maybe that will save this expansion. Structured Edo! No, no structured Edo. <laughs> there's a structured Edo on the anti-air tower. Interesting. Well, I was about to die anyways. That uh, air makes short work of the engineer. Yeah, and now there's an anti air tower. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, meanwhile, Iron is setting up in his favorite spot in this map. Cross spawn near the ledge of your opponent. Hmm. I think I get what Sol is thinking here, taking the ledge. Because he's like, oh, I'm going to lose my base or my expansion on the, the right hand side, so I need to replace that mass. But it's pretty vulnerable. Like, Iron can make five MMLs and run them under the cliff, and Soul's going to have a hard time dealing with that. Yeah. Which I'm guessing is why Iron likes this spot so much. Yeah, well, it opens up, like, obviously he locks down this choke point, and it's a huge choke point. In several directions. Yeah. So, essentially, is what he's allowing himself to do is move down the center here without really much risk. I know there's four loyalists flanking here, which are yeah, going to pick Iron up a land factory. Yet. Yeah, I don't know what I'm that's about. Well, hmm, yeah. Iron must be zoomed in somewhere else. Which is which weird is because Iron, yeah, <laughs> Iron plays zoomed out. Maybe he wants to just base trade and just be done because those four Lolis are probably not going to kill him as quick as his push here down the center. Soul Rip already calling GG. Yeah. Well, a 3 0 for, for Iron. And uh, I, I think that. There's definitely ways that Soul Ripper is definitely better than what happened here. I just I think he played Iron's game and Iron wins that game. You know, just he's been playing nothing the same thing uh, for the past year. So what are you what are you expecting? <laughs> but yeah, nevertheless, I think uh, the first two games were definitely very well played by by Soul Ripper and then. Maybe he lost a little bit of his morale in the last game there. But Iron Commander goes on to the grand final of the fall season to face Hope, a match that we will get to here very, very shortly. Um, we're going to probably put uh, maybe 15 minutes on the clock, and then we're going to do the pig bands, and uh, we'll jump into that game as quickly as we can. Stay tuned uh, for the grand final. Best out of seven. We'll be back in a, just a little short while. If you're still watching, give a thumbs up to this video. If you like the video, leave a comment. If you love the video, please subscribe. And if you are blown away by it, check out my Patreon page. This has been Knight. Take care and peace out.